Hi, prayer partners. It's been a few weeks. Thank you for your prayers. I'm feeling much better. Just about got everything back to where it needs to be and finally getting past this coughing. Um, somebody asked me, was it COVID? No, I just tested for COVID and it was negative. Just, I don't know, allergies, cold, flu, whatever it was, but it was 10 times worse than COVID. But um, worst part was just cough and cough and cough and cough. Couldn't sleep. Miserable when I was awake. And uh, thank you for your prayers and your concern. I appreciate it so much. Uh, back to where we were three or four weeks ago now. Uh, we've been talking about principles of prayer and conditions that we need to meet in order for there to be power in our prayer. We talked about praying in the will of God, uh, praying in the name of Jesus, the ministry of the Holy Spirit as we pray, faith in our hearts as we pray. And today I want to spend just a few minutes talking to you about persistence in prayer. In Luke's gospel, twice Jesus tells stories that deals with being persistent in prayer. And he says this in Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13. He said to them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go to him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves? For a friend of mine is on a journey, and has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, my children are in bed, I cannot rise and give you. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, that word importunity in the original language is an interesting word, it literally means shameless persistence. In other words, just not giving up. And... Uh, <clears throat> Yet for his importunity, he shall rise and give him as much as he needs. Verse 9, Jesus said, I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And again, in the original language, it sounds much different than our English vernacular. Literally, to interpret that into the vernacular we speak in our day and time, that verse would say, Jesus said, I say unto you, ask and keep on asking, and it shall be given to you. Seek and continue to seek, and you shall find. Knock and keep on knocking, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks and keeps seeking finds, and he who knocks and keeps knocking, it shall be opened. If a son should ask bread of any of you that is a father, Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If then you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? I think my take on this would simply be to say, there are those times in our lives when we ask God for things, and it's as though he said, really? Is that really what you want? Do you really want me to take care of that need? Do you really want me to answer that prayer? How serious are you about this? Is it a big enough concern to you that you're not going to let this go, but you're going to continue to talk to me about this until I give you an answer? Are you really serious enough about this? to keep on and not forget about it. How many times have we prayed prayers that uh, we felt pretty earnest about it when we prayed, but later that day we'd forgotten all about it? I think there are those times that Jesus says, how serious are you about this? Is this something you really want me to answer? It's a way for us to purify our motives, to check our hearts, to see where we really are to be determined, to be serious, to be shamelessly persistent before God until we get an answer. And again, from our previous studies, we understand this. Sometimes God's answer is wait. Sometimes it's yes. Sometimes it's no. But whatever that answer is, it gives us peace to know that our prayer has been heard. God knows what's going on. 
and he's going to take care of it. But oftentimes I feel like we don't get answers to prayer because we just mumble a few words and then it's out of our mind and off of our heart and we just move on. Also in Luke chapter 18, Jesus tells this story. He says in uh, verses 1 through 7, Luke 18, he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men always ought to pray and not faint or literally not grow weary in their prayers. And Jesus said to them, <clears throat> there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard men, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? In other words, he's saying, if this is true with men, how much more true is it with our Heavenly Father? Sometimes we get an answer from men just because we absolutely wear them down, um, aggravate them into doing something, motivate them by our persistence. And Jesus reminded us that it's the same way with God. If we're not serious about it, if we're not committed to it, then why should we expect him to be? And again, it's that purifying of our motive to say, God, I believe you could be glorified in this. Lord, I believe you could be witnessed in a greater arena of people with an answer to this prayer. Lord, I love this person and I don't want to see them to have to go through what they're dealing with. And I'm not going to give up until you give me an answer. Are there prayers in your life that you've been praying for for some time and feel like you've not heard an answer? I don't know whether I've shared this with you before or not, but there are two people in my life that I am very concerned for their condition before God. I see no evidence of Jesus being their Savior. I've invited them to church. I've sent them gospel tracts. I've talked to them in person. I've called them on the phone. I've sent them letters. I've done everything I can imagine. But about 40 years ago, I made a commitment to the Lord that every time I'm in church, every time an invitation is given, I'm going to be on my knees at that altar praying for those two individuals that they get saved. Or Lord, unless you give me direction to pray otherwise. And so if you see me at church, even if I'm preaching, and when the invitation time comes, and you see me on my knees at that altar, those are two people I'm praying for. And I'm going to keep praying for them till they either get saved or I die, one of the two. I've also got somebody else that's very near and dear to my heart. And for the past uh, little over 11 years now, I've been praying for them that they'd give their heart to Jesus. They're close. It looks like to me it's going to happen. I don't have any reason to believe that it's not going to, but I'm concerned about them. I love them. I'm not going to quit praying. I'm going to keep it up and just keep asking God to save them. Is there persistence in our prayer? Are we really concerned about the things we're asking for? Are we just mouthing words or do we really want God to see our hearts and give us an answer. Thank you for taking just a few minutes to listen to me today. And again, I want to thank you for your prayers. I'm feeling much better. Hope this has been a blessing to you. And as you pray this week, I want you to kind of think about the things you're praying for, how long you've been praying for them, or how long you're willing to pray for them. And uh, next Thursday is Thanksgiving, so I pray you all have a great celebration with your families, friends. Happy Thanksgiving, and we do truly have reason to give thanks. God is our Heavenly Father. He listens to us, and He answers. God bless. Have a great day.